You know, we have a funny situation in today's first reading from the book of Daniel. We are told that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had a dream. And he wanted his court advisors to interpret the dream for him. But the problem was, he could not even remember the dream. All he knew was that he was so disturbed by it, he just would not let go of it. To his request, all his court advisors had a common answer. They all said, please tell us first, my lord the king, what your dream was, and then we will interpret it for you. But the king said, oh, you are all a bunch of fakes. Anybody can offer an interpretation to a dream if you are really wise as you claim to be, you should be able to tell me not just the meaning of my dream, but the very content of it. Ang hirap ng request, ano? Interpret mo yung dream, but you have to say what the dream was in the first place. How can you do that? And so the king went to the extent of threatening to order the execution of all his court advisors unless thou, one of them, succeeded in doing what he was asking for. It is in this ridiculous situation that our hero, the young Jewish slave boy named Daniel, who became a member of the king's court assistants, comes into the scene. Only Daniel is able to recount the dream for the king and to interpret it. Well, if you follow the Mass last Sunday, Christ the King, about the first reading on that Christ the King Sunday, which was also from the book of Daniel, but from chapter 7. Well, it was about Daniel's dream of four monsters and the coming of a fifth character. The fifth character he called one like the Son of Man. Then the recounting of the dream is followed by an interpretation. In chapter 7, the interpretation of the dream is given by the angel upon the request of Daniel. And the interpretation is this. The four monsters that he saw in his dream represented four kingdoms, consecutive kingdoms that would rule the world as empires. But... The fifth character, the Son of Man, riding on a cloud, represented the ultimate victory of God's kingdom through the remnant people, the Israelite people, whom he called the Holy Ones of the Most High. And now, the dream that we heard about, chapter 2, our reading today is what I call another version of the same dream of the four kingdoms. The same, you know, another version of the same dream. Four kingdoms and the victory of the kingdom of God in the end. Except that dito, ang nananaginip, the dreamer, is the king of Babylon. And the interpreter is the prophet Daniel. Remember, in chapter 7, the dreamer is the prophet himself, and the interpreter is an angel. You know, I call this a funny passage because it makes me think of something naughty. Siguro kung ako yung isa sa mga advisors, 
I myself would probably have done what Daniel did. I would also have dared to reconstruct the king's dream. How could the king question its truthfulness if he himself could not even remember what his dream was all about? You know, ako sa tingin ko, we have in Daniel a precursor of the professions that we would later call psychologists, psychiatrists, and the discipline we call psychoanalysis. Alam nyo, because leaders are public figures, they do a lot of talking. They do not realize that they are actually giving themselves away as they, re as they articulate their thoughts and their feelings publicly. Sa Tagalog, may kasabihan tayo na huhuli ang isda. Saan? Sa bibig. You catch a fish through its mouth. And that is why loud mouths in our society actually are caught by their own mouths. Kapag ang isang leader engages in an irrational monologue, when he blurts out his feelings in his unguarded moments, when he goes around bullying everyone the way King Nebuchadnezzar is doing in our first reading today, actually, he is giving a good psychologist or a good psychiatrist an access or an insight into his state of mental health. Pontius Pilate was like that before Jesus. That was our gospel reading, last Christ the King. Remember how Jesus turned the tables on Pilate. Pilate was the one interrogating. He asked the question, and Jesus answered the question with another question. Nawalan ng poise si Pilate. He got upset. Napikun siya. He lost his composure before Jesus. Ay nako, ganyan din si Herodes. Herod was also like that before John the Baptist and before Jesus. Remember how Herod expressed his being a paranoid. He had killed John the Baptist. He had him executed. And then when he started hearing Jesus, oh, he became paranoid. He said, I thought I killed him already. Who is this guy? He sounds exactly like John the Baptist. He thought Jesus was a reincarnation of John the Baptist. Well, remember how Jesus reacted? When people warned him, they were trying to silence Jesus, saying, Di ka ba natatakot? Herod wants to kill you. Jesus did not feel intimidated at all. What he saw in Herod was a fox that was actually betraying his fears through his loud barking. Jesus seemed to have a good insight, you know, into the insecure egos of people in authority. How they tried to project authority through the clothes that they wore like the Pharisees did or through the massiveness of the physical environment in which they operated like the temple priests did. And so, his simple answer to the disciples who were awed by the impressive looks of the temple and the offerings in the temple, Jesus' reaction was no big deal. They will also be reduced to rubble. Jesus advised his disciples never to allow themselves 
to be deceived by people who pose like the anointed Son of God or as the much-awaiter Savior or the ideal leader that the country desperately needs. He does not even feel worried even if these people will actually succeed and bring about a national catastrophe or a terrible economic crisis or even a civil war or even a foreign occupation. He seems to agree with the saying which you have heard me quote many times from Marilu Diaz Abaya. I believe in happy endings. If things don't turn, down, don't turn out happily, then it's not yet the end. I believe in happy endings. If it's not yet happy, it's not yet the end. It means we just have to continue retelling our history until it reaches its proper happy ending.